I need to sit on something. Hello and welcome to Little Drops of Wonderful. This is my channel where I talk about all things knitting, crochet and other crafty stuff and catch you up on everything that I've been up to over the past few weeks. The things I've got made and what I've been doing and all of the crafty, yarny loveliness in the world or in my world. Uh, my name is Ali and this is a really cringy start to the podcast but I'm going to keep going. I'm going to power through. Um, I live in Kent, in the very southeast of England, in the UK. It is currently the 5th of September, and I'm going to say this right at the beginning, because I'm going to mention it a lot throughout the video. Uh, it's 30 degrees today. It's already 27, and it's only at about half past nine in the morning. So I'm getting this filmed now. I am boiling and I'm going to complain about it a lot. I apologise. I know there are other places in the world where you're just going to be like 27. <laughs> but I can't cope. I can't cope with it. It's September. It's supposed to be autumn. Anyway, I can't believe I just started talking about the weather immediately. Uh, where can you find me? I'm on Ravelry and Instagram as Starry Eyes Alley. And I also vlog over on my other channel which is all about daily life here in the UK and adventures and so on and that is this little wonderful life. I've just finished um, my series on Scotland, we went to Scotland for a week and I did a series of videos about that and a day in York as well so uh, I'll link that underneath if you're interested. Please do go and check it out, it was a lot of fun and I filmed a podcast whilst I was there, my last video. Thank you so much for all of your comments on my last episode which was my July wrap up this is my august wrap up i should have said that at the beginning this is not going well is it so far this is a bit of a chaotic start <laughs> i need to calm down a bit so this is my august wrap up my july wrap up was filmed in scotland and you left some lovely lovely comments on that you all really enjoyed the little diversions or distractions sorry wrong word distractions with the mouse that i kept watching out of the window that was eating a biscuit that we'd left out for a pine martin <laughs> That we didn't see. That will only make sense if you've seen the video. I'm so hot. I think it might have sent me a bit giddy. Uh, so thank you for your comments and I've also had a little flurry of Kofi donations as well so I want to say a huge thank you for that. I don't say it enough. I really appreciate that support. It all goes back into things for the podcast uh, and equipment or you know entry to a yarn show if I'm filming it or prizes and postage and things like that so I, I want to thank you for supporting the podcast in that way it means an awful lot to me so thank you we've got lots to talk about today and you can already tell it's going to be a weird one so and it's probably going to be quite a long one as well so I was watching a podcast the other day I was watching the Woolen Wishes podcast Tracy and Kirsty. And it was really long. And I remember I sat down and I was like, how long is this video? Thinking it would be about 45 minutes. It was like an hour and a half. And I was just like, yes, this is perfect. This will get me through cooking the dinner. And then later on when everyone's having showers and everything getting ready for bed, I can sit and watch the rest. And I can just, oh, it was just lovely. So I've come to embrace the fact that sometimes my podcasts are a bit long. Did I mention it's really hot? Literally, I need to keep adjusting. I'm wearing shorts, but um, honestly, it means my legs are sticking to the sofa. It's a stupid leather sofa, we need new ones. I'm sitting on a cushion. It's not helping. Uh, what else do I need to say? Oh, thank you for the comments on my Southern Wool Show vlog. Although I can't say that with any sincerity because it's not actually finished. I've not finished editing it yet. <laughs> I've been doing that this morning. So it's not up. So you might have hated it. <laughs> but just in case you didn't and you enjoyed it, thank you very much for watching it. That should be up before this video. If it isn't, I'll cut this bit out or I'll probably just leave it in. So August. What's been going on in August? It's been the school holidays. So the kids in uh, England break up at the end of July and they go back to school at the beginning of September. So Phoebe went back to school yesterday. Lilia, my eldest, is doing, uh, she's doing her kind of A-level equivalent at college, so she doesn't go back until next week. It's a bit later for them. And I think the universities um, go back even later. So, but we're definitely getting into that new term time and Phoebe being back at school means I've got a bit more time for filming and so on. 
so it's really nice but the school holidays were great we had a lot of fun there was a lot of long lines a lot of lazy mornings of course we had our trip to scotland and a few other days out and yeah it's been really really good and the weather was was brilliant it was it was warm it was uh it was mainly dry we had some wet days and so on and i thought we got away with it and then this week is going to be pretty much 30 degrees all week we've got a whole week of this it's like a proper heat wave and i think they were saying on Thursday night we're going to have like a tropical night so I don't think the temperature is going to dip. I can't even begin to tell you how miserable I am about the thought of it but stop going on about the weather. I've been working quite a few Saturdays over the summer as well so because the kids have been off and we haven't been doing clubs and stuff and football's not been on for Phoebe it's been quite easy for me to give a bit of time on the weekend so I've offered to do a few more Saturdays and I work because I, I work two days a week in a museum and they're always looking for people to do Saturdays and get time off in Lou. so I did that. We had a work trip to Manchester one day and I bought some yarn, which I'll show you later. But let's get stuck in, because I've been talking for seven minutes already and I haven't even shown you anything. So let's get started with some finished things. So I had a couple of, I had a few goals that I'd set at the beginning of, uh, at the end of June, which I then worked on throughout July and then carried forward into August. So I kind of stretched it over two months. And two of those goals were to finish uh, two crochet garments. And I have done that. I'm really, really pleased with myself. So the first uh, one I finished, I'll do it in order of how I finished it. Now this hasn't been blocked, but it has been hanging up on the hanger for a long time. So this is my Mellow Waves cardigan. It's a pattern, a crochet pattern by Dora Does. Um, and she is Dora Ex Lord on Instagram and I've made this out of Catania cotton and it's kind of a bit of a sport weight I think the path the patterns written for fingering weight but I had uh, some of this cream or I had a cream and I had this pink left over for making a dress for my daughter uh, but I changed my mind on the cream and I actually ordered this kind of natural color it's not it's not like a bright white it's their natural color um, Shakimaya Catania and the pink is I can't remember watch the last episode I said it then <laughs> and I loved this I absolutely loved it and I really like the finished result as well I'm going to put it on without mentioning it's 30 degrees I don't mention it's 30 degrees it's not it's going to look a bit weird over my my t-shirt but um hang on a minute So it's a really cropped cardigan, really relaxed and uh, a, a nice amount of lots of positive ease, as you can probably see. It's got this lovely stitch pattern that you do with extended double crochets, which I've never done before. I really enjoyed doing that. It was a really good pattern. You could really quickly memorise, oh, not everything. You could really, oh dear. <laughs> you could really quickly memorise um, the stitch pattern as you went, and it was a really interesting construction. You basically work backwards and forwards, and then you attach yarn and work backwards and forwards, and then you sew it together to create the cardigan shape. It's really simple, and then you do the the border all around as well. I really love this. It's so comfy. Um, and drapey because obviously it's cotton and I just loved it. I'm going to make another one. Uh, I, as soon as I finished it, I pretty much decided right away that I'm going to make another one. I just got to choose the yarn. I might make another cotton one or I might make one um, in wool. I haven't decided yet. But yeah, that was brilliant. Where's the hanger? And this was my entry into my strawberry shortcake make along, which I'll be uh, talking about towards the end of this episode. I'll be drawing loads and loads of prizes from that. So if you took part in it, make sure you uh, watch till the end because you may be, you may be a winner. And obviously I'm, uh, the th it fit the theme because it looks like strawberries and cream, doesn't it? I'm so pleased with this. I can't even tell you. I'm gonna really enjoy wearing this sort of while sitting of an evening or just popping out or sitting in the garden. It's just perfect, I, I love it. Can't wait to make another one. And my other finished thing that I finished, 
So today's Tuesday, I finished this on Friday and it was still slightly damp Saturday morning when I wore it to the Southern Wool Show. And it's my Amma top. So I had a few issues with this. It's a really simple pattern. It's free. It's by Maria Vallis. Uh, it's free on, in, uh, on Instagram. Free on, uh, uh, what's that other social media site called again? Instagram. That's the front. It's not free on Instagram. That's not what I mean. Ravelry. It's free on Ravelry. <laughs> It's a link to her website, um, so I'll, li I'll link the, web the actual pattern, the website link underneath. And I used two full skeins of fingering weight yarn, one for the front granny square and one for the back granny square. So you basically just crochet two granny squares, you seam them together, leaving a little slit there, and then you do a, a border around the arc to create the armholes and then you do a little border at the bottom. I actually made my border slightly longer, can't remember why, I think I was worried it wasn't going to be long enough but actually in the blocking it came out the perfect length and then you do a little border around here. Now as you can see my borders and my arms are a contrast colour, they're actually the same colour but a darker version of the colourway. So the, the yarn is Cookston Crofts who's based in Scotland, lovely Claire, and the colourway is granite is it just granite i think it's called granite it's not called granite sparkle it might be called granite sparkle so i had two skeins of it but i used them all up on the granny square so then i didn't have enough to, to do the contrast and then liz came to well first of all claire at cookston crafts came to the rescue she had a 50 grand skein left of one of the darker colorways so i bought that from her and it was a lot darker but i really liked it but then liz left a comment on my last video saying I've actually got one that's a little bit lighter it's still darker than your one but it's a little bit lighter than the new one so we did a little swap so she got my 50 grams and some minis and I got her 100 gram skein of the slightly lighter version and I used that and uh, I've got a ton left here all caked up so I've got oh, one of my hairs on there so I've got enough to make socks or mittens maybe even a hat to match double granite like the new double denim uh, so I'm really pleased with it and I actually wore it to the southern wool show on Saturday and I was a bit hot in it because it was far too hot to be wearing wool uh, but then when I was editing and I was looking back at the footage I just thought it didn't suit me so I'll, I'll try and put a bit of footage in now whilst I'm talking and I just thought it was it just was I, I felt it was really a, a kind of unflattering shape on me and I think what I had in my mind when I was going to make this was something a lot more like the Mellow Waves cardigan, a lot wider and a lot drapier and a lot baggier and bigger. So I will wear this, definitely. I really like it. I might get a white vest. I wore it with a black vest underneath because that's just what I have, but I might get a white vest to wear underneath. And I might try it out wearing it to work one day and say, seeing how I feel. But the shape of it is absolutely gorgeous. I love the little cap sleeves that the... Uh, pattern creates and I'm really really pleased with it and if you haven't made one I'd say it's a really good first garment to make for crochet and yeah I'm really pleased with it have I got anything else to say about it no that is it right let's move on to things I made progress on throughout the last month that are still in progress and that would be one thing <laughs> The Tenny Beanie. It is living in my gorgeous chicken bag by Karen, and I've got her card somewhere. Here it is. S Diva Designs, Seamstress and Designer. So the, the bag's by Karen. That's her card there. My battery's going already. That is a bad sign this early into the podcast. Let me just change it over. There we go, might have moved a little bit. My hair is going to get progressively more poofy as the uh, podcast goes on. So this is, yeah, my chicken bag is by Estiva Designs. I was looking for a car, but of course her tag's on the front. And I love this so much. I've got something on it though. Look, I've obviously got, i put it on something. I'm going to have to give that a wipe. I think I said that last time as well. And I've got on here a little knitting Highland Coo. Now I've got two of these. But this particular one was sent to me by lovely Arminty. Thank you, Arminty. That's on there. 
and I've also got some other little notions in here. I've got my little uh, So Re Me, my little So Re Me notions pouch, which was a gift from lovely Rachel at So Re Me. She has the most gorgeous little things, and she, she sells a huge variety of things in her shop. I'll link her underneath. And look at that with the bees, and it's got a little magnetic clasp, and it's all yellow, yellow lining. And this fits a ton in. I've got my tape measure, my scissors. I've usually got my needles and stuff in there for sewing in ends. And I've put on here a little charm, uh, which was from uh, Claudia at Crochet Luna. I belong to a crocheter. Oops. Why? Ah! I'm holding it up to the screen rather than the camera. There we go. I belong to a crochet and it's got these lovely little beads on it and a little chica. <laughs> I love that. Claudia's also got an amazing Etsy shop where she sells all kinds of badges and stuff like that. There are just so many good make makers. That one of my favourite things to do, even if I'm not buying stuff, is just looking at Etsy. I just love it. Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent, haven't I? So this is the Tenny Beanie, and I was so near to getting this finished for showing off on the podcast. Look, look, it doesn't look like a hat at all, does it? So the Tenny Beanie is patterned by Whimsy North, uh, and it was a lovely gift uh, that was sent to me um, a little while ago, because I talked about wanting to make it, and a lovely viewer sent it to me, and I was just so appreciative of that, thank you. And the yarn, look at the yarn. It's by Lola at Third Vault Yarns. Uh, she's a UK dyer. And I. she dyes sort of... Oh, how does she describe it? Is it nerdy? Nerdy yarn. It's all sort of based around sci-fi and fantasy and gaming and stuff. This is her um, card. And this particular colourway is unfathomable... <laughs> I, try, I can't say this, can I? Every time I try to say this. Unfathomable depth. And it's 100% Superwash Falklands Merino, and it's on her Githa Worsted base. And it's so super soft and super squidgy, and I just love the colours in it. I love the, the gold and the purple, and it's working up so well with this pattern. And this pattern has got a kind of cable in it. Let me see if I can, if I put it on, I mean, it's going to be a disaster for my hair, but I think it will stretch it out and you'll be able to see the cable more. So I, I went, you can do this hat a couple of ways. You can choose to just do a, um, a single brim or you can knit the rib um, longer so that you can fold it and have a folded brim, which is what I decided to do. But look how close I am. I'm literally about to do the decreases. I could have had this finished rather than looking like I've got a hedgehog on my head so I'm not gonna be able to see but I'm gonna go super close up so hopefully you can but it's a kind of two by two rib pattern interspersed with like a really simple little cable which you do by twisting the stitches on the needle so you don't do it with a cable needle or anything but I've never done that before it's like a twisted you, you sort of knit one you skip one but a knit one and then knit the one you skipped and then slip them both off the needle at the same time. You probably all know what I'm talking about, but for me, it's a new technique. And it's really effective because it makes this really cute little simple cable, but you're doing it without the faff of a cable needle. I really like it. Right, let's just de-poof the hair and sit back. Uh, yes, I'm really, really pleased with this. And I think I'll probably end up, I'm not, I'm going to yoga tonight. I've started yoga classes. It's gonna be horrible, it's in a church hall. We don't have the likes of air conditioning or anything here, so uh, it's in a church hall, it's going to be hotter than Hades teapot. <laughs> That's not an expression. It's going to be hotter than Hades teapot in that church hall. Uh, so yeah, all that to say, I won't be knitting on this tonight because I'm going to yoga. What is wrong with me today? Oh my goodness. So that is what I've progressed. That is the only thing I've progressed. So out of all of the goals that I set myself uh, at the beginning of July and then carried through to August, I've finished two, progress one, which is exactly what I wanted to do. And I haven't, the things I haven't done is I still haven't done my lurking whip audit. 
my lurking works in progress audit, my LWA. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like a good one to do at this time of year and that's going about picking out all the bags I've got lying about that I've maybe got yarn ready to go for projects or just bags that I've hidden yarn in and popped about or maybe long languishing works in progress that I haven't looked at in ages and just doing an audit of what I've got and making decisions about right what am I going to bring forward what am I going to set goals for uh, getting done and what am I just going to abandon and setting the goals has even though they're not like they're not rigid they're not set in stone I'm not beating myself up about them but setting goals for what I want to get done just small breaking it down basically into small goals for each month is really working for me so I'm really enjoying that so, um, so I do want to get that little audit done I also still haven't started the contrast blast socks which was uh, mystery sock knit along by Stephen West which is now long over so I know exactly what the socks look like and it's no longer a mystery um, but my goal for my goals for September are going to be all about socks because the Strictly Sock Along is Strictly season and the Strictly Sock Along is coming and I will be talking about that later uh, so I want to knit through my stash of Strictly yarn because yes I do have a quite significant stash of Strictly uh, so sock along themed yarn. I want to finish any lurking socks and I also want to start the socks that I uh, with yarn that I bought when I was on a work trip to Manchester. So I went to, I looked up, we had a bit of free time to go shopping so then I immediately looked up on Google Maps where there was yarn shops or craft shops and I found a few. But I went to Ab Abacan Fabrics if you live in Manchester, I'm sure you probably know it. It's a huge kind of fabric shop, which I really, really loved. And it's got a really big yarny section as well. So I went and had a good look around there. And I found King Cole Summer. And it is a, what's the mix? 55% bamboo, 37% cotton, and 8% PBT. Now, PBT, I think, is a type of mamade. Thing like nylon or something I don't really understand it but it, basically it's something that gives it strength I think this is it and then on the label it's got a little thing to show you how it self patterns so I'm gonna make some cotton socks I've never done that before I'm not even sure if this is supposed to be for sock yarn but that's what I'm gonna use it for I'm gonna make a pair of cotton socks it's four ply but I've never seen it before and it feels so nice and cool and dry, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I just really want to see how that works. So that's on my list as well. So my goals that I'm setting for September are my uh, LWA, my lurking whip audit, uh, start my contrast plus socks, start my cotton socks and Maybe maybe what I'll do is I'll cake up and cast on all of my strictly themed yarns. Would that be a bit would that be a bit insane to do that? And then just put them all in bags and then just start working through them, see how many I can get before the end get done before the end of the year. And then I can just finish them throughout next year if I don't get them finished. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe I can film a little video about having a bit of a caking up and cast on party of strictly yarns. Oh, I want to do that now. Yeah, so those are my goals for September and probably, let's face it, October and November as well, but we'll, we'll get to that at the end of the month when we do the next update. Oh, and I've also caked up a ton of yellow yarn as well, that you can probably see in the background here. So I took all of my sort of, well, it's not all of them, most of my yellow skeins of yarn and caked them up. I don't know if you remember, but ages ago I said I wanted to make a really nice, big, comfy, wear on the sofa in the evenings type of big baggy cardigan or jumper, all out of yellow yarns. So I've got a few ideas for that, knit or crochet. And I was just getting fed up with them being in a bag, just looking at me, so I caked them all up. And I figured, right, once they're caked up, I can start thinking about what I want to make. I'm kind of tempted to make a Mellow Waves cardigan, but bigger and longer in yellow. That might do the trick. Or maybe I'll just do a really big positive ease fingering weight sweater. But that would take me a long time, wouldn't it? But then I could hold it double. Any ideas? Something really slubby and comfortable. Throw on. Throw over pyjamas. Cardigan. 
jumper, knit or crochet, Tunisian crochet, anything like that. Any ideas, let me know. Um, one that I really love is the uh, is the crochet cardigan that's kind of made with diamond motifs. I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but I'll put a picture and the name of it on the screen. Um, I've got that saved in my favourites and a few people have recommended it as well. That would also be nice in yellow yarn. Hmm. Right, what have we got next? Okay, so before uh, we talk about the Strictly Sock Along, so exciting, or incoming bits or some patterns that I've got on my radar, or prizes for the strawberry mail and everything else, I want to talk about one of my favourite things, Skillshare. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm a little bit obsessed and Skillshare, I'm really excited to say, are sponsoring this video. Uh, I'm really, really happy that they want to continue working with me because I really am a little bit obsessed with it as a platform. Uh, if you don't know, Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creative people like us. And it has a vast range of topics from cooking, photography, graphic design, digital illustration, knitting, sewing, crochet drawing, uh, to entrepreneurial skills, creative confidence, uh, creating creative careers. I've now said like variations of the word create too many times and it sounds weird. I've done a lot of classes on Skillshare. Uh, if you've watched uh, my videos for a while, you'll know that I've done a huge variety of things, but I think my favorites, I was trying to think what my favorite things that I've done over the past few years have been. And I narrowed it down to drawing a self-discovery with Marie Andrew, where you sort of you can do like pie charts and simple little doodles and drawings to explore your thoughts and feelings uh, and your mental health. I really, really enjoyed that class. I also really enjoyed daily meditative meditative art with Nia Modi. That was one of the first ones I did, and I still use the skills that I learned in that class nearly every day. Um, to do little doodles to calm me down. Another one that I use every week is uh, Perfect Pasta Al Pomodoro with Nicoletta Grippo. She's only done a couple of classes on Skillshare and I really hope that she does more because I did the, the this cooking class to make a really simple but perfect pasta sauce and I learned so much just in that one class, even just about cooking like store-bought dried pasta. It was so good and I, we do that dish most weeks. Uh, I know it off by heart now. Uh, Confidence for Creatives with Eugenia Washington was a really lovely one. It was a really different one for me and I really enjoyed doing it. And also maybe the one I did last episode as well, which was the watercolour juicy fruits, um, which I haven't brought with me, but it was a really, really good short class, but so informative about watercolour. And I couldn't believe the results I got uh, from doing that class just with such uh, short instructions, it was so good. And like I was doing it and people were coming into the kitchen going, oh my God, that's really good, did you just do that? And I was like, I know, it's amazing. You need to sign up to Skillshare and learn how to do watercolour juicy fruits. And then I said that I was gonna move on and do, what was the name of the class? I should know this, I've been doing it all week. So, Coloured Pencil Drawing with Amelie Braun. She's a cartoonist and an artist. It is six hours worth of lessons, so it's really long. I'm about halfway through, and so far, it is fantastic. It's so fun to do. She's a fun teacher. Um, I love the way she um, sort of talks to you throughout it. So I was quite limited, though, in my tools, because I didn't want to just not do it and have to go and buy stuff. So I just grabbed the only drawing pad I had, which is a watercolour pad, which is not really good for coloured pencils because it's so textured. And I've also only got a set of 12 colours of my um, Faber-Castell Polychromos. So I'm quite limited in my colour palette as well. So I'm not going to show you this very close up. I'm going to show it to you from afar because it's not very good. But the first lesson she, she talks you through is drawing um, an image of some macarons with some raspberries. It's not finished, but here's my effort so far. <laughs> so I've done some macarons and she teaches you about um, how to do shading and sort of colour building using coloured pencils, which was really interesting. Quite pleased with my raspberry up here. So um, yeah, that's where I am so far. But it was clear to me that I was being really hampered by the fact that the paper was so textured. So it wasn't coming out quite as I wanted. So I went to Hobbycraft and I have purchased 
um, <clears throat> quite cheaply, just some Bristol board, which it says ideal for technical illustration, but it's really, really smooth paper. And I think this will be uh, perfect for working with coloured pencils. I don't think I'm going to go and invest in any other colours just yet. I'm going to stick with my 12 and see how I get on. But if I get into it, maybe I will. But the class has been brilliant. And I just love doing it because I sit there. It's so much better than just sitting scrolling through social media. I'm just really losing myself in, you know, learning how to do this. And the time just goes so quickly. Uh, yeah. I love it. I am a, yeah, I'm a bit obsessed. So if you want to uh, unlock some new creativity like me or build on some existing uh, creative skills that you already have, um, there's even things like yoga on there. I've saved a yoga class that I want to try because I'm, as I've mentioned, getting back into yoga. Uh, yeah, so Skillshare is, I've got to read this properly. I've got to get this right. Skillshare is giving you a one month free trial when you use my link in the description box. I'll also put it in a pinned comment as well. Uh, you get a one month free trial, you sign up, you get everything that's on Skillshare free, you can save classes. If your trial ends and you decide not to sign up, when you do sign back in, your classes will all still be saved there and everything because my membership lapses and then I get another membership and so on and my stuff is always there. I don't know why I'm telling you this. This is a very boring technical bit that you don't need to know. <laughs> My point is, give it a go. You can't lose anything. Make sure you know how to cancel it if you want to. But if you're anything like me, you probably won't want to. And thank you very much, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Okay, I've got some incoming bits to share with you. I don't often um, show the gifts that I've been sent anymore because I don't want to give the impression that it's in any way required or expected. Um, obviously I get in touch with people who send me stuff and I send them emails or messages to say a huge thank you and I appreciate it so much I yeah I just I'm so grateful that people feel that they want to do that but it is absolutely not expected at all however I got one that I was sent and I wanted to open it on the podcast because I think it's going to be fun to open and I've got some stuff that I got at the Southern Wool Show so if you haven't watched my Southern Wool Show vlog uh, this will be new to you. If you have, then this won't be new to you. <laughs> right, I'm going to need scissors for this. Oh, I'm going to have given myself a horrible job with editing this, aren't I? I've just been all over the place. So, this is a gift from Angie. And she sent... So, I'll show you first. She, she sent me a bag. Because she knows I love Alice in Wonderland. And oh, the fabric of this bag is beautiful. It's basically got illustrations some of the old illustrations of Alice and the, and the text from the book. Isn't that amazing? It's so beautiful and on the inside it's red and there is pockets in the same fabric on the inside and it's got a lovely sturdy little handle here and then the drawstring is like a proper full-on professional drawstring. I don't know if you can have a professional drawstring, but to me this is a professional drawstring. It does that. Now the the, um, the people that make these uh, no longer sell bags, they no longer make them, but they were called Slip Stitch Studios. Oh, here's their, there they are. Slip Stitch Studios. So it was a gift from them, and but they're no longer in business. So I feel really, really lucky to have this. And also with it came the little matching yarn cosy. So you put, it's, um, it's stretchy. So it's the same fabric, but it's uh, stretchy, <laughs> stretchy fabric. And it goes around your yarn cake to stop it collapsing if you're pulling from the middle. Isn't that amazing? So that was such a lovely gift. Thank you, Angie. Um, I'm just gonna put that in there. But she sent along with it, uh, some yarn and it is an acrylic is it an acrylic yarn what's it yeah so it's 85 percent acrylic and 50 uh, acrylic and 15 percent nylon and it's in the color golden yellow and i believe it comes with a pattern inside the label as well i don't know why i think that why do i think that oh because it says pattern included uh but look it's coming really squidgy uh, really flat bags so that's why I thought it'd be fun to open we're going to cut it and watch it come to life we're going to watch it poof because 
the little things like that make me very happy. Ah! Oh, it's still flat. Hang on. By the magic of Poofaline. Ta-da! Look at that. Oh, I just love that. Oh, I love sucky bags that make everything shrink. Oh, it's very soft. Oh, that's nice. Oh, it's kind of got a sheen to it as well. And that is, oh, it's, uh, yeah. Oh, what is it? It says loops and threads on the front, but it also says wool-like. So I think maybe it's loops and threads wool-like. I don't think we get this here. So where's the pattern? Is it inside? Yeah, the, pa the pattern's inside the label. And the pattern that you get is, is it a knitted pattern or a crocheted pattern? Called the fringed wrap materials loops and threads were all like 100 grams so does it can you make it out of one ball then that's what it sounds like oh no this pro project is worked with four strands of yarn at one time so does that mean you need four balls of it i don't know oh it's a crochet project it's a crochet project and i've got two balls of this oh i'll get onto ravelry and have a look if not, this will make a lovely um, other shawl. That's so nice. Right, let's do the other one, just so we can have fun. Did I actually show the picture on the label? Flat and, ta-da! That's the shawl. That's the fringed crochet shawl. That does look like it's gonna require more than two balls though, doesn't it? But that's okay, I can find another pattern. I've still got that pattern. I can use other yarn for it. Thanks, Angie. I'm gonna put that in the bag. Okay, stuff that I got at the Southern Wall Show. I have a couple of bits uh, that I bought and then I've got some prizes, which I'll show you when I talk about the Strictly Sock Along. So, oh, and then I had a gift as well. So I'm gonna show you that. So the first thing I bought was this gorgeous bag. So Gail, who is made by me, or Gail made by me on Instagram. Where's her thing? Where's her, her label? She makes beautiful bags, and this is, a, I think it's an African wax print fabric, and then on the back it's like this suede, so strokeable, so lovely. And they're lovely, uh, sturdy handles, they're a drawstring, and on the inside, it's this lovely, orangey burnt orange uh, lining and I just fell in love with it but honestly I don't need any more project bags so this was a completely frivolous purchase but I just couldn't leave it behind I loved the colours so much like teal and orange it's kind of got a 70s vibe to it so I bought this thinking I'll either keep it for myself or I'll add it to the prize pile for the Strictly Sock Along if I can actually bear to part with it I haven't decided yet because I do love it so much. So that is by Gail, and that was my first purchase. And then I made a gigantic purchase. So I've been uh, practicing my spinning. I'm very slow at it, and it's taken me a long time, but when I was at the Southern Wall Show last year, Alma Sotwitchy Crafty Lady uh, took the time to show me uh, some spinning techniques, and I've watched some videos, and I've talked to other people, and I've Practice, practice, practice. And I finally, I think, got a relatively good spit. Now, ignore the fact that some of this is a lot lighter. I accidentally spun some lighter fibre at the end. I'm gonna take that off. But um, yeah, I'm quite pleased with my efforts on my drop spindle, but this has taken me forever. And I am an impatient crafter. Um, this is too slow for me, so it's kind of putting me off. And also it's a bit faffy because you do your spinning and it's very satisfying and then you do that and then you have to park it and then you wrap it round and then you get, you know, and it's just a bit too faffy for me. So I knew that the threshing barn were gonna be at the Southern Wool Show with um, electric eel nanos, which are like these mini e-spinners. And I bought one. So I tried it. You will already know this if you've watched the Southern Wool Show vlog, if I've edited it and if it's gone out before this video. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, and I bought one. I haven't tried it yet because I haven't had time since Saturday. But it looks like this. I haven't even taken all the bits and bobs out of the bag. It looks like this. 
It's really cute, really small. You can get them black or blue. And the ladies at the threshing barn showed me how to use it. I had a go. They explained the kind of pros and cons of it, the kind of good bits and the limitations. For example, the bobbin is very small, so you, you can only ever spin, I think about, if you want to ply it, then you're going to have to spin half a bobbin to leave room on another bobbin to ply them together on here, uh, if you're going to use this to ply as well. So you can only, I think, ever maybe do about 60 grams a go, I think that's what it would end up being. But um, that doesn't bother me because I'm such a newbie and such a beginner. Uh, that if I got that much I'd be chuffed so if I if I want at any point if I get utterly into this and want to spin lots then I can upgrade at some point in the future but for now and for me as a beginner this is perfect it was £140 from the threshing barn so uh, it's not like the cheapest thing I've ever bought at a yarn show in fact it's the most expensive thing I've ever bought at a yarn show uh, but I mean Look how that's that entire thing in that box that's going to fit very easily in my crafting cupboard and not take up any space. And I do think it's going to bring me hours and hours of enjoyment. I've just got to get started with it. So I bought one of those. If you've got one, let me know your experiences. Oh, don't tell me anything terrible or negative. Keep that to yourself. <laughs> if you've got any positive stories or like good YouTube videos or instructions or tips, let me know because I'm really looking forward to this. I was also given some gifts on the day. I'm not going to show you everything, but I want to show you a couple of things. Okay, so that's Lilia getting up. She'll probably come in in a minute. I met Kirsty and Tracy from The Woolen Wishes, and they've got an enamel pin, and they were giving them out. So I've got a Woolen Wishes pin to go on my yarn show bag. So that was really lovely. Thank you so much, ladies. I was so chuffed with that. And uh, I met up with Nancy from the Knit Sip Happy podcast. She's Canadian. Uh, she uh, was over here with her husband, visiting family. She, I think she was born in England and moved to Canada at some point in her childhood. So she's got a lot of family here and they were traveling around the country in Scotland visiting. And she bought uh, a sock set uh, all the way from near where she lives by Turtle Pearl, who have got the cutest little logo. Turtle Pearl, and these are striped turtle toes, is <laughs> the colourway. And it's self striping, and they divide it up so they'll both be identical. So it just says both strands were dyed together to create matching socks, they can easily be knit to at a time. Ensure you start from the same end of each ball. And then I've got the contrasting colour. Isn't that the most autumnal? Color. So that was from lovely Nancy. Thank you, Nancy. And my friend Kate was there and she very generously donated some prizes for the Strictly Sock Along, which again I'll show you later. But she gave me this gorgeous Craft House Magic Sock Set in the colour Don't Worry B, as in Buzz Buzz B. <laughs> Happy. And that's all for me. So that's two sock sets for my socky September. Ooh, socky September. Nice bit of alliteration. And yeah, so those are the little bit. I did get other bits as well, but I'm rabbiting on a lot and I feel we need to move on to other things. So I did quite well, didn't I? So let's move on to some patterns on my radar. This is where we talk about patterns that I've become aware of or people have said, oh, look at this pattern. I think you'll really like it or I've been gifted a pattern or I've just seen something that I want to share. So, uh, right. So the first one I wanted to share was actually something I bought at the Southern Wolf Show. And that is the Babbling Brook Wrap by Shannon at Blue Fern Yarns. So here it is. Now, I'll put a little um, insert here of us looking at it at the stall, at the Blue Fern Yarns stall at the Southern Wolf Show, just to give you a real idea of how beautiful it is. It's designed for an advent. It's a knitted um, pattern and you can use 24 10 gram four. Blah, blah, blah. You can use for four ply, you can or fingering weight, you can use 10. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. If you're using, if your advent is fingering weight, 
you need 24 10 gram minis. If your advent is DK, you need 24 20 gram minis. We got there in the end uh, to make the wrap and it is so beautiful. So that was one I wanted to mention. It's £4.70. Um, yeah, it's £4.70. The other one I wanted to uh, mention is the Flower Duster by Crochet Cakes. Um, my friend Sarah was wearing hers um, on the day and it, it was honestly just gorgeous. There is a free version that Clarissa Beth has uh, on her Ravelry but she's also done a new version which is graded up to a 67 and a quarter inch bust and it also includes video tutorials and a stitch chart as well. Uh, it's a DK weight pattern, it's crochet, and it's $5.60, which is about $4.60. It's so nice. And seeing Sarah's one, like she made in, I think she said she made it in drops. So drops cotton yarn. It was just, it was so lovely. Uh, what was the other one? Oh yes, so Sharon emailed me to say, oh, I've seen this sweater that I think you'll like, and I immediately saved it to my favourites. It's called the Lobster Sweater. Lobster with an H, lobster <laughs> sweater by Whitney Terrell. Terrell. Uh, it's $8 or about £6.60. It's a fingering weight uh, knitted uh, sweater with lobsters on it and that kind of nautical stripes. Oh, just, it's so good. Uh, I really, really, really love that pattern. So thank you so much, Sharon, for emailing me about that one. Then I was gifted a pattern from Susan. Thank you, Susan. And it was the Eggs for Easter Socks by Stone Knits. Uh, and Susan had seen the designer interviewed on the Fruity Knitting podcast and then seen that she had these amazing socks with chickens on. Oh, they're so lovely. And she sent me them as a gift and the toes look like eggs. <laughs> they're so cute. So obviously that's a knitted pattern. They're five, five Swiss francs, which is about £4.70. And uh, finally, is this the last one? Yes. Um, the Reading Shawl by Kay Jones. I think it's, is it out? I'm not sure. I know she's been saying it's coming out very soon. If it's, so if it's not out now, it will be soon. It's a knitted pattern for DK weight or four ply uh, fingering weight held double. And it's a giant squishy triangle shape. So a bit like, so this one that's behind me is one of my favorite crochet makes that I made with Advent yarns over. I made this a few years ago now and I made it over the course of three years. So it's I reckon knocking on for about six years in the making and existing now. And it's a giant triangle. I think I show this every episode, but I'm going to show it again because I love it so much. And it's a giant triangle. And I actually use the uh, pattern by Anna Boo's house and it's called the Crochet Granny Wrap, which is actually a pattern that's designed for chunky weight or bulky weight yarn. But I just wanted the pattern for the shape because what I wanted was to make a huge triangular blanket so not so much a shawl, but a blanket, a wearable blanket. And that's exactly what I managed to achieve. And out of all of the blankets I've ever made, this is the one that gets used the most in our house. Because you can just wrap yourself up in it in such a lovely way, because it's got that triangular shape. I just, I'm gonna make another one of these. Gaina had one with her. What's it got stuck on it? It's one of those labels that you get inside a shoe. Obviously one of the girls has just discarded that and it's got stuck onto the blanket. Um, Gaina had one with her at the Southern Wool Show. She'd done her own version, uh, but she'd been a lot more sort of careful with the placement of her yarns. Mine was just a um, uh, sort of potluck, whatever I opened, went into it as I went through Advent. But she was kind of a bit more um, organised with the placement of her yarns and the colours that she used and it looked beautiful. So I might do something along those lines with sort of more harmonious minis from my vast stash of minis um but yeah so similar shape and similar size as set the pattern the reading shawl by Kay jones is a a dk weight and b garter stitch so it's going to be like super extra duper squishy i definitely need one and lilia definitely needs one it's whether or not i want to hers is very ordered you know the stripes do i want a bit more chaos in my reading shawl I, I do like a bit of chaos in my knitting and crochet. So thank you, Kay, for the reading shawl. And, oh, it, that's not the last pattern. I've got a couple of cross-stitch patterns to mention as well. I was sent as a present uh, from Petra, who you might know in the comments as Chicky, um, 
a stitch, a cross stitch bookmark pattern by Stir Crazy Crafter UK, who's on Etsy. And it's a book tracker cross stitch. So you have different colours for different genres of book and you fill it in as you read and you can get different sizes. You can have 12 books, 24 books, 36 books and you can track your sort of book genres on cross stitch and then you've got a bookmark at the end. She also does tons of other stuff in her shop like embroidery journaling which is fascinating. Quite tempted by that. Not that I need anything else to add to the things I want to make. Um, so I'll link her shop underneath and thank you Chicky for that. And I also got another cross stitch um, pattern from uh, Cecile and it is do one thing, was it do one thing every day that makes you happy? It's a cross stitch by Sugary Do. I really like that and she also sent me a chicken pattern as well called Polly the Chicken. Uh, so I'll put a quick picture up of that as well. So thank you Cecile and thank you to everyone that gave me a gift pattern. Um, yeah, I've got lots of things to make and not enough time to make them. I would just want to make all the things all the time. But still have time, you know, to do housework and edit and make videos and go to yarn shows and do things and go paddleboard. You know, just want all the time. I just want the moon on a stick, basically. <laughs> okay, it's time to talk about the Strictly Sock Along. It is Strictly season. Um, it doesn't feel like it because, in case I haven't mentioned, it's 30 degrees and it should not be 30 degrees in Strictly season. <sighs> oh, yeah, I can't even talk about it, even though I keep talking about it. It started in 2016. So 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, 22, 23. That means this is the eighth year of the Strictly Sock Along, which is just bananas. I can't, I can't believe it. Um, we have many Sock Alonger veterans joining us, but if some of you are brand new, I thought I'd just do a little recap of what the Strictly Sock Along is all about. Someone on Instagram said they learned to knit socks this year just so they can join in for the first time. <laughs> Amazing. So here's what you need to know. One, you don't need to watch Strictly Come Dancing or Dancing with the Stars in order to join in. So the Sock Along is designed to coincide with the UK's Strictly Come Dancing, which starts in the mid, mid to late uh, September. And with, the idea originally was to knit on your socks or crochet on your socks whilst watching Strictly. But it very, very quickly descended into ridiculous mayhem. <laughs> and the main idea very quickly became to ruthlessly and shamelessly cheat. So, it's kind of got this theme of sparkle and silliness and autumn and dancing and glamour but and it's supposed to be knit while you're watching Strictly or Dancing with the Stars but really that's not the point anymore the point is to cheat and explain why you're allowed to, if you've got a good reason why you're allowed to knit on them they're in Just think of it that way be creative Two, the Strictly Sock Along runs from the 23rd of September, Saturday the 23rd of September, which is the Strictly launch show according to the Sun website, <laughs> that trustworthy place of information. Because <laughs> the BBC haven't actually announced it yet, but if that changes, I'll let you know on Instagram. Uh, and it runs until the first week of January. So it's over three months. So if you're slow or you're a beginner, there's tons of time, there's less pressure, there are loads of ways to win, win prizes so you can win for finishing things or being chatty or just for joining in. Uh, you don't have to finish things. Um, so it's a nice long make along and there was lots of people help each other out. But yeah, no pressure, really silly, don't take it too seriously. Three, knit and crochet are welcome but they must be socks. Mittens are a cheat too far. They do need to be socks, but any craft is welcome. You can even sew them if you wanted to. That'd be fine. Uh, you can work on your sock. Oh, number four, sorry. Four, work on your socks whilst watching Strictly or Dancing with the Stars or reruns or spin-offs or listening to Strictly podcasts or basically whenever you like, as long as you can prove you're allowed. And this is when the creating, the, the creative cheating or the cunning rule bending comes in. So previous examples include having a tenuous link to a Strictly celebrity, whether they be a judge, a professional dancer or a contestant, dancing whilst knitting, seeing a glitter ball that day, 
Having a picture of the Jar Janton Dubec in your knitting bag, these are all real examples of things people have done. <laughs> Working on your socks whilst in Vienna, home of the Vienna Viennese waltz, or simply having strictly in your heart at the time of knitting. Uh, these are all actual tactics um, that previous sock alongers have employed. So you can just see how silly it is and how tenuous your, your links to Strictly can be. And there are several ways that you can be, sorry, number five, there are several ways you can be present in the Strictly sock along. You can post your finished objects in the Ravelry FO thread. You can chat in the Ravelry chat thread and you can use the hashtag Strictly Sock Along 2023 on Instagram when posting anything about your um, socks. And prizes are drawn from all three of those online places and extra prizes are rewarded for ingenious cheating as well. So there's loads of ways to join in and get stuck into the fun. Uh, number six, the prize categories are on my laptop, hang on. Okay, the prize categories, which I should really know off by heart by now after eight years, but I don't. Cha-cha uh, cheating. Uh, so this is where you need to remember to share your impressive rule bending and cheating tactics, because I will choose at least one winner at the end of the sock along, so in January, who I believe has employed the most impressive underhand tactics. Uh, tactics. I have been known to award on the spot prizes throughout the sock along for this as well. Um, so that's the first category. The second category is the first 10. So as soon as the first 10 is awarded in the 2023 Strictly, so uh, Strictly Come Dancing series, there will be a winner drawn at random from the Ravelry Chatter thread. The next category is the Halloween category. So there will be a winner drawn at random from the Ravelry FO thread for anyone with F FOs in there by the weekend of the Halloween show. Uh, the date for that is yet to be confirmed, but I will update you on Instagram and Ravelry. The next category is the Made It to Blackpool category, where there will be a winner drawn at random from the Ravelry FO thread for anyone with finished objects in there by the weekend of the Blackpool show, because they all go to Blackpool, home of ballroom, every year. And the date for that is yet to be confirmed as well. And finally, there is the Fab U less category which is where there'll be three winners at the very least uh one from the at least one from the ravelry chatter thread at least one from the ravelry fo thread um at least one from the instagram hashtag uh and uh yeah yeah from those three places and they'll all be drawn at random at the end of the sock along there's usually loads of prizes. I've got some already, but what I find is more prizes coming as we go on as well. So, yeah. Oh, and also, number seven, the official Strictly Sock Along yarn this year is by my gorgeous friend Suzanne at Green Lampkin Yarn. I've got two to show you, and I've got two more on the way because she's done them on some different bases. I've also got my 10 paddle. I forgot to wave that at the beginning. I got it all ready. Oh, I should have got this earlier. This is perfect. Did I mention it's quite hot today? Oh, yes. So I've got my 10 Strictly pedal. Uh, yeah, so the two official Strictly Sock Along colourways, you don't have to use these, but there's always a dyer uh, that does an official Strictly Sock Along uh, colourway, which is so fun. So if you want to, you can choose to use the official colourway. And these are them. I said to, um, when we were talking about it, she said, what kind of colours do you go for? And I said, well, I trust your judgment. You're the one that knows about dyeing. Um, I know nothing. But I said to avoid yellow, because we've had quite a few yellowy colourways uh, the past few years. So we've gone for something a bit different. So this one is called Ballroom Bliss. I just love this dark, dramatic dark. It just looks like a waltz happening on the Strictly stage to me. This is just such lovely colours. And you can see the sparkle there. So this is on the sparkle sock base, but she's also done them without sparkle. So if sparkle isn't your thing, you can still have the Strictly colourway without sparkle. So I've actually ordered those and they're on their way. So I'll have some as prizes and I'm actually gonna knit a pair of socks with one of them as well. Um, and the other one is Latin Love. So this one obviously refers to the Latin side of ballroom. No, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, the Latin side of ballroom dancing. Or the ballroom side of ballroom dancing. No, that doesn't make sense. Latin dancing. Your cha-cha-chas, your salsas, your sambas. Look at 
that and again you've got that dramatic dark splash which I just think oh, it's so beautiful she's done such an amazing job I'm so impressed so these are available now I don't know if she sold out because I know that they were really popular when she announced them last week so and um, like I say you can get them on sparkle or non sparkle and they are absolutely beautiful so those are the official yarns uh, I think that's it yeah, I think that's everything. I'm going to show you a few of the prizes I've uh, gathered now. Oh, my Etsy shop is open. So if you want to get uh, one of your one of my giant Strictly socks badges that are completely plastic free, um, you can to advertise to everybody that you're working on your Strictly socks. I don't have any to hand, so I'll put a picture up on the screen as I'm talking. I'm really giving myself future editing me a hard time. Sorry, editing me. Future me will be cursing past me right now. Okay, so prizes. Uh... Oh, and quite a few people have started already, by the way, because we're, this sock along hasn't even started yet, but people are already knitting their socks because that's cheating. There you go. Well done if you've already started because that's terrible cheating. As long as you can explain to me why that is reasonable, it's fine. So prizes. Okay, so the first one that I can just see in front of me. Let's just grab them in the order that I can see them. I'm in such a mess. Okay, so when I went to the Southern Wool Show, I uh, was very lucky to be given a couple of uh, skeins of yarn by uh, some of, uh, a couple of the vendors there. So the first one, I went to see James Makes Yarn, who's his... Uh, label and I kind of dribbled all over him I was very embarrassing such a dork uh, yeah so he said choose any scheme you want as a prize for the Strictly Sock Along and it was really hard because James's yarn is so Strictly it's bright it's colourful it's happy it's neon it's poppy I just oh, I just love it so much uh, but this was the one that screamed out at me this is called Pumpkin Patch it's one of his Halloween colours I wish I'd bought a full sweaters quantity worth because, oh my goodness. So this is gonna be a prize. The same thing happened when I went to see lovely Stevie at the Curated Yarn Company, or Curated Yarn Co, here's a label. Uh, she said, choose any scheme you like. I was with friends at the time, so they helped me and everyone agreed that this one, super saturated, bright, Gorgeous colours. Look at that blue. This is called the Marvellous Mrs. Maisel. Not the, no, just Marvellous Mrs. Maisel. So I was really happy with that colourway name as well because I love the Marvellous, I love Marvellous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> Why did I decide to film a podcast today when obviously my brain is not functioning? So yeah, thank you Stevie and thank you James for these gorgeous prizes. They may be standalone prizes or they may go with bags. I haven't decided yet. I've also got a skein of yarn, which I was going to keep, but I've decided, do you know what, I've got a bit of a yarn issue, so I'm going to add it to the prize pile. When I uh, contacted Claire at Cookston Crafts to ask about getting some more yarn for my Amatop, the granite colourway, I um, bought the 50 grams that she had, and then she sent one of her treat boxes, which was amazing, I shared it on the last episode. And in that treat box was some gorgeous Cookston Crafts yarn in the colourway Beach Hut. Now I have quite the collection, I'm very lucky, of Cooks and Crafts yarn in my stash to use. And I, I, as much as I'd love to add the, oh am I changing my mind? No, don't change your mind. As much as I would like to add this, I think I just want to share the love. So this is going to go into the prize part for the Strictly Sock Along as well. Oh, it's just oh, so gorgeous. Then my friend Kate, who has previously donated yarn for the Strictly Sock Along. It's kind of how we know each other, because so, we exchanged emails over the years when she donated yarn from her own stash so she brought some along with her to give to me so I've got a sock set from the Bellica yarns who are also a vendor there but I didn't get to stop and look at their stall so I'm really glad I've got this this is has this got a colorway there's no colorway name on it okay we're going to call it strictly purple <laughs> um that's not really what it's called look at that what a gorgeous sock set. So I've got that, donated by Kate. And then from Gorgeous Haley at Ducky Darlings, I've got this one. This is called a sister set. So you get two 50 gram uh, skeins. Uh, so you can choose to make 
I guess, two pairs of socks and swap the heels, toes and cuffs around. What a good idea the sister set is. And there's no colourway for this one either. The colourway is Strictly Beautiful. There you go, so we've got Strictly Purple, Strictly Beautiful. <laughs> and then gorgeous Lay Family yarn. Uh, this is, uh, what is it? From the Iron Bridge collection. So it looks like we've got a full skein here and then three minis. It's called Scrumptious. So we're changing that to Strictly Scrumptious. <laughs> How gorgeous is that? Oh, Kelly. Oh, oh, she is so talented. So that's going to be a very lucky person's prize. And not only that, but Kate gave me a 12 day countdown. A 12 day little mini countdown. I don't know what the yarn is, I didn't ask. I don't know if she's put this together herself. Or if she's, oh, I'm going to have to ask her. How gorgeous. So someone's going to get a 12 day countdown. So I'll make sure that this goes out as a prize in plenty of time before Christmas. So you can open this as a Christmas countdown if you want. I've also got uh, some crochet sock patterns from Clarissa Booth at Crochet Cake. She's got loads of lovely crochet sock patterns and it's going to be winner's choice. There's going to be two winners and you can choose whatever one of Clarissa Booth's crochet sock patterns you would like as a prize. I think that's all the prizes I've got at the moment and obviously the yarn from Suzanne. If you've offered me a prize and we've communicated about it and I haven't mentioned it because I'm feeling really disorganised and forgetful, get in touch with me because I obviously haven't written it down on my spreadsheet. If it's not on my spreadsheet, it's a disaster. So thank you everyone who's already donated prizes and yeah, I'm so looking forward to getting stuck into Strictly season. Let me know if you're joining in. Okay, I'm gonna talk about the Strawberry Shortcake Mail now because we've come to the end of it and I'm gonna draw the prizes and it's gonna take me a little while to draw prizes. So if you didn't join in and you don't wanna watch this bit, skip to the very end bit. I'll put the timestamp on the screen. Uh, but you know, if you didn't join in, there's gonna be lots of inspiration to come like patterns and some of the prize stuff. So you might wanna watch it because it might you know, enable you or inspire you. Um, but yeah, jump ahead if you want to. And we're gonna get stuck into drawing some prizes for the Strawberry Shortcake Man. So this was so fun. This was such a warm, friendly, lovely mail. And it really, really brought me some happiness in my least favorite season of the year. I wish it was still going on now because it's 30 degrees. <laughs> so I love the way everyone worked with the inspiration, which was uh, the Strawberry Shortcake Dolls. It was an illustration and a cartoon. It still is a cartoon about a little strawberry themed um, girl and her sort of summer fruits themed friends and I was really into it in the 80s and it's I believe it's still going now um uh, but obviously she's changed a bit over the years I'll put a picture up that I've shown before uh, to give you an idea of how she's changed over the years and if I've got one of her with a load of her fruity friends I'll put that up as well but it's been such a friendly make along we've had so much fun we've done um, a BuzzFeed quiz on which strawberry shortcake character we are. I was something called Frosty Puff, which I've never heard of, so that must be a brand new one. People were sharing their childhood memories and toys. Dawn posted a picture of herself dressed up as strawberry shortcake when she was a child for a fancy dress. People made socks, they did spinning, they made hats, shawls, amigurumi, bunting, pot holders, crochet ice cream. There was a wine bottle cozy, bags. Jane and her 92-year-old mother went and had Eaton Miss, which has strawberries and raspberries in it. People sewed garments, uh, knitted, crocheted, uh, did embroidery, made brooches, decorations. People were having fun matching their yarn with their bags, with their stitch markers, and even their snacks <laughs> to the whole theme. Uh, we had doilies, we had fruit-themed dragons. Book sleeves, scrunchies. Uh, and so many people just chatting and encouraging each other so it was so much fun and I think maybe we should do it again next year but I'm thinking maybe changing the name a bit so there's less confusion around the theme maybe just make it the strawberry make it a strawberry theme or maybe like summer fruits or summer sweetness or or stick with some strawberry shortcake let me know what you think um but if you'd be interested in joining in again again next year as well so I've got prizes I've got four pattern prizes and eight physical prizes, which considering this was supposed to be a really kind of relaxed, just let's just do it for fun type of make along. 
it's quite impressive. I think people just really got inspired by uh, the idea and captured people's imagination. So thanks to everyone who got in touch to donate a prize. That was really unexpected and lovely. So we had 453 posts in the Ravelry thread. It was just one Ravelry thread. So I'm going to draw eight winners from there and 91 posts on Instagram. So I'm going to draw four winners uh, from there. And it's all on my spreadsheet. It's actually, oh, sorry, just knocked the camera. It's actually not a spreadsheet, it's on Notion. I use Notion these days. And I'm just going to go through in the order it's in my list and draw them. Okay, so the first um, prize is the Swiss Dots uh, Shorties pattern, which is a sock pattern by lovely Nancy of Knits It Happy. And the winner of that was, oh, I did all these with random number, number generator for Ravelry. And on Instagram, I just did this. Scrolled up and down and clicked. <laughs> So the first winner from Ravelry is Elaine, uh, Tree Source Limited. So yay, Elaine. Elaine comments all the time. So it's always nice when I see her name come up if she's won a prize. But not only that, Elaine is in Canada and the designer, Nancy, is also in Canada. So you've got a sock prize, a sock pattern prize from a fellow Canadian, Elaine. Uh, and I know you knit quite a lot of socks, so hopefully you'll enjoy the pattern. Uh, the next winner is uh, what, also from Ravelry was in Maria Wolf and that is Maria. She's in Portugal but she's Norwegian and she is Fiber Wolf. She's got a YouTube channel called Fiber Wolf and she made the strawberry field socks by Amber Crawley as her entry. And you have won I'm gonna get my big box of prizes here. Things are about to get even messier. Okay. So you won the gorgeous strawberry bag from Conchetta at Button Up handmade oh it's so beautiful this bag and the that dark gray has actually got sparkle in it and there's some strawberry uh wassy tape in here and i'm putting with it um one of the dye dyes yarns strawberries and cream patisserie yarns there it is and with that as well a uh, lovely paula from knitting purple donated uh, some stitch markers from Ladybird Loves. That's the card for the... So Paula donated them by buying them from Ladybird Loves and sending them on to me. There we go. So that's the card for the person that made the stitch markers. And I've divided them up into groups. So I'm going to put them in randomly. So... Ooh. So you get a little... You get a little strawberry. So here's a... You get a glass one, and you've got this little mini skein of yarn that goes with it. So that's a clear one with a stripy yarn. There's another clear one with red yarn. And then you've got a red strawberry with stripy yarn. How cute are these? They just look good enough to eat, don't they? They look like boiled sweets. And then another stripy yarn with... A red strawberry so they're gonna go with each of the cupcake uh, yarns I'm gonna put them in here for now she also gave me my own Look, got the little yellow yarns and then there's a little tea set which reminds me of Alice in Wonderland stitch marker as well I'm tempted to turn the little yellow ones into earrings and I don't wear earrings that often. Maybe a uh, pendant. So thank you for those, um, Paula. Uh, yeah, so that's what you've won, uh, Maria. So I just need your address. So everyone that's won a physical prize, please get in touch and let me know your address. If you want a pattern prize and you're not on Ravelry, just let me know your email. Okay, the next one was from Instagram. And this was... Rhubarb and Burble, who is Louisa, the Mayor of Barnstable. I always love that, that she's the Mayor of Barnstable. Her dedication to this theme was amazing. I'm going to put a picture up because she had a strawberry-themed yarn, a strawberry bag, strawberry stitch markers, red lace needles, and the pattern was a strawberry striped shawl by Carolina... I'm not even going to try... But no, I am going to try and say it because it will make people who actually know how to say it laugh, won't it? Hamelainen, that won't be the right way to say it, but anyway, uh, Louisa, 
mic drop on the whole strawberry theme. It was amazing. So you have won uh, one of the patisserie cupcakes with the stitch markers that I've just shown. Uh, and you have got the mango and pineapple one to send to you. So that's the mango and pineapple one. Such a cute little patisserie box. It's so cute. There we go. So that's what you've won. Now, next up, the next winner, we've got Ba 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 Ba, <laughs> who's Angie. And honestly, this was the, the number that came up, mate. Like every time I drew a random number, it would be Ba 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 Ba. But you'd already won a prize. You were the first one drawn out, and then you just kept coming up and up and up. It was so funny. So you really, really, really were meant to win a prize. So Angie was super chatty and encouraging in the Ravelry thread. So Angie, you have won the pistachio ice cream color way patisserie with the uh, strawberry stitch markers as well. I don't know, I think I might already have your address, but uh, if I don't, I'll let you know. Okay, the next one was from Instagram, and this was Rebecca Sews, and she made, this was a really good entry actually, it was very subtle, she made the Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit, uh, which is so soft and pretty and subtle, and it's got this tiny little flex of pink in it, which she said reminded her of Raspberry Ripple, and it was a really beautiful project. So you have won the final patisserie cupcake from Dye Dye's Yarn in the plum pudding colourway, uh, along with the strawberry stitch markers as well which I'm sure you'll put to very good use, as I'm sure everyone who's won one will as well. Okay, from Ravelry, <clears throat> um, Rise of Dawn 75, who's lovely Marissa in Arizona. Uh, she made the most incredible amigurumi strawberry shortcake. I'll put a picture up here. I absolutely love it. And she also made crochet strawberries and the seed pot socks. Seed Pod Socks by Helen Stewart, so she did a brilliant job. And you have won one of Dye Dye's yarn, uh, one the pink one, where is it? Dye Dye's yarn, little mystery chocolate box sets. So you've got 16 5 gram minis all wrapped up like a chocolate box here. Uh, so you could use this as a little Christmas countdown or I don't know, birthday countdown, or just open them all up at once, like I would do if it was actually chocolate. So that's what you've won. And yeah, I just loved that strawberry shortcake amigurumi. It was brilliant. Okay, and then the next winner was Paula Knitting Purple. And I love it when this happens because she's the one that donated all the stitch markers. So she donated a prize and now she wins the prize. So Paula, you have won the red version of that uh, little scrappy gift box. I've got exactly, it's exactly the same, but it's in a red box. Uh, this was all randomly drawn, by the way, um, the, the prize allocation and everything. So um, I'm really pleased though, Paula, because you very generously donated a prize and then you won a prize. The universe has spoken. Okay, the next one from Ravelry was S.J. Sutcliffe, who's Sharon in Kent, a fellow Kent, Kentish maid, as we are called, and she knit socks in strawberry and blueberry colours, but she basically smashed it out of the park. I'll put a picture up, because she just literally learned to knit, like, in the last two months. Incredible. My battery's going again. This is terrible. I'll quickly show you what she's won. Sharon, you've won the Lizzie Bird Knits yarn that I bought. Oh, and the colourway is, of course, strawberries and cream. So get in touch with me on Ravelry with your address. Okay, next up, from Ravelry, one of the other very chatty people in the Ravelry thread was Poolside, who is Adriana, she's in Connecticut, and she made two strawberry themed project bags, strawberry themed socks, a summery shawl and a strawberry themed book pouch as well, based on the, that it was the same pattern I used that I shared in my last podcast. Uh, so you have won um, a little prize that I put together. So I had some yarn from Virgin of the Yarn and Glass podcast and she donated it to do with as I wanted. It's so pretty. It's by the Cat Lady. So here's the card of the yarn dyer. Got a lovely little stitch mark on there as well. The colour is Tainted Love. But I thought that was a really lovely kind of summery, strawberry, blueberry smush of a colour. Isn't that gorgeous? Uh, superwash merino and 
Stellina. Oh, it's sparkly. I didn't even notice it was sparkly. Okay, so we got that. And then I had a bag that Julie, so Julie made a load of bags. There's a few of this podcast. She made a load of bags and she sent them to me to, to use however I wanted. So I've been giving some as prizes. I've kept some for myself. I've given a couple to my sister and my mum. But I thought that this bag is gigantic. It's really big really good size and I thought it just went really well with this kind of because it's kind of got this faded antique sort of theme to the yarn and the bag and I just thought they went really beautifully together so you've got both of those so that is your prize uh, for you Adriana and then next from Instagram uh, Judy Labine who is Judy she made a pink garter asymmetrical scarf and you have won, Judy, the beautiful um, Wicks and Hearts set pattern from Rel at the Dabbling Hook, um, which this is something that's on my list of things that I really want to make. Uh, so she has very kindly donated that as a prize. So uh, I will contact you on Instagram to find out where's the best way to send that. And then what we got left, we've got two more prizes and they are both from Alyssa at Naya's Toy Box. She sent me two of her Amigurumi project, uh, patterns. One is the blueberry doll and one is the strawberry doll. So the winner of the blueberry doll uh, was from Instagram and it was Caroline for the love of crochet who is the most lovely enthusiastic crochet YouTube channel and she made the most adorable strawberry mushroom dolls which is a pattern by Lulu Compatine and an epic strawberry themed amigurumi bunny. So I really hope, Caroline, that you have fun making the blueberry doll because you are an amigurumi genius. So thank you, Anaya, for that pattern and well done to Caroline. And finally, we have got Janet, who is Jalalala. <laughs> I could never say that right. In Illinois, she made strawberry bunting and her daughter made a strawberry purse. And she also, right at the beginning, shared an amigurumi pattern for a strawberry, uh, for a rainbow bright doll which I'm very excited about and very tempted by. I loved Rainbow Bright. I, I also have all my old Rainbow Bright dolls as well. <laughs> and you have won the Strawberry Doll Amigurumi pattern from Anaya's Toy Box. And there we are. That is all the patterns drawn for the Strawberry Shortcake Mail. I absolutely loved that um, make along. It was so fun. So thank you so much to everybody that joined in and really took the inspiration um, I loved it and do let me know if you want to do something similar next year and finally we have come to the end oh, future editing me will be crying into her mug of tea by this point or probably ice cream because did I mention it's quite warm I think that's it I think that's enough isn't it I don't think we're going to add anything on it's hot join the Strictly Sock along go and watch the vlogs about when we were in Scotland and it wasn't hot <laughs> Uh, and then have a walk around the Summer Wall Show in my Summer Wall Show vlog if that ever gets done and edited up before this video. Um, so thank you so much for choosing to spend your time with me here. I really appreciate it. Uh, there's so, so much great content out there and I'm just pleased that you spend a little bit of time, or let's face it, a long amount of time today, uh, with me here. Uh, yeah. Until next time. <laughs> Happy knitting, happy crocheting. I will see you at the end of September. I'll see you before then, but I'll do my next round up at the end of September when hopefully we will be into autumn properly. The weather can get its act together. See you soon. Bye.